So welcome back to the Midlife Momentum Podcast. I am excited today. I've got a guest with me. Her name is Christine Darley Klein. She's a writer and producer for film and television. She's also a senior copywriter and a journalist who's experiencing a very creative phase in her life. It started by going through a divorce during the lockdown and weaning off an anti an anti anxiety medication she'd be ta- she'd been taking for twenty five years. These big changes led to being open to the world, and that meant discovering abilities she didn't even know she had. Not only did she film her first movie last year. She's created her own film production company, written a book for a musical with another one on the way, and an animated TV series pilot and an animated feature. And recently, she's been a guest on podcasts, performed stand-up comedy on open mic night, and she is set to perform a voiceover in her animated TV series. So I really love this bio. It's very exciting. Thanks, Christine, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here because you have a particular journey as a woman in midlife. You've, you know, been through this journey. You've been through some things that many women in my audience can probably relate to. And so can we start with those things that you actually mentioned in your bio, which are that you went through a divorce and you you had anti-anxiety med- or you were on anti-anxiety medication for a long time uh, because of anxiety and and somehow you you came off of it. So can you tell us a little bit about what you have been through to, you know, that you are now on the other side of? Sure, sure. Um gosh, where where should I start? I think everybody had a hard time. <laughs> had a hard time during the lockdown. Um my situation was maybe a little bit unique in that about 8 months before the lockdown, um my ex-husband unexpectedly left and then I found myself you know going through a divorce during a difficult time and uh, also had the opportunity to decide if I wanted to get off the medication for anxiety that I had been taking for quite a long time and you know it was a hard decision (laughs) because you know it was a lonely time it was a difficult time but I ultimately decided you know it was the best thing to do so it took about a year a little over a year under the care of my therapist and a psychiatrist to wean off. It was a benzodiazepine that I was taking. So um, it was something I had been dreading. I had a feeling I was going to have to do it eventually. And I had been dreading it for quite a while. Um, But, you know, I just, I decided to go ahead and do it. and, And it took a while, but I weaned off of it. And that's the reason why I think I'm having all this creativity going on. Okay. So, so not only did you go off this medication, which you, you said you felt like you, you were, you had to go off of it. Was there a reason you felt like, like, does it have a a life expected or a life, a certain amount of years after which you, you need to change or, or do something else? Well, the reason why is that a Benzodiazepines aren't typically the best uh, medication to take for anxiety. Uh, there are others that are much more effective, and it, it's just not that type of medication is 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 frowned upon. And so I had to have a therapist, it, uh, who'd been t- prescribing it to me originally, and he, I knew that he was going to retire, and nobody else really wanted to prescribe it. So I knew once he retired. I probably wouldn't have a choice. Okay. Okay. But I guess there was part of you that, that wanted to, to get off of it as well, because you didn't then go on to something else. You. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Because, you know, I I felt really kind of beholden to that medication. You know, there's, there's a part of it that you, you can't really truly just be free. And, you know, I felt like I was a little bit trapped because of it. So, yeah, it, it must have been really hard for you. Not only were you getting off this medication, but at the same time, you were going through divorce. So it, which, you know, I would think you might need as much support as you can get. But here you are getting off anti-anxiety meds and have going through divorce at the same time. So how was that for you? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie. It was really difficult. It was. Yeah. It was at times um, really scary. But 
it's part of the reason why I'm, real, I'm really proud of the fact that I decided to do it anyway. And it's giving me a reason to help other, or, or I really want to encourage other women who may be also in the same situation, at least with the medication, who are still taking it, to give them a little bit of courage to also wean off the medication. I feel like if I could do that, going through a divorce, you know, on a lockdown, that um, I think, I hope that it could give other women encourage encouragement to do the same thing. Absolutely. I, I know there's a lot of women in your situation who would love to not have to take this medication. I mean, I'm not saying anybody has to get off of it, but it's just a matter know. of choice, right? And you made that choice to do it and you went through it uh, despite external circumstances not being ideal when you did that. And then, so, but something happened to turn things around. So you were able to get through this. And you, like you mentioned before, you said you found this other, this creative side of yourself that I guess you ha you knew was there, but you hadn't really explored it up until then. So can you just tell us a little bit about what that journey was like to discovering this? Yeah, that was the most exciting part. So I knew, you know, I've been a writer for a very long time. I'm someone who's, you know, always had a creative mind, but I didn't have any idea just how creative. I had no idea that, you know, for example, I can paint oil paintings that, you know, I can do a Degas that looks exactly like a Degas. I had no idea I could do that. And that's within two years. Um, I had no idea that I could write a book for a musical. I had no clue. I've been writing screenplays and other, you know, creative pursuits, but I had no idea that I could make gourmet meals that could kind of blow your mind, um, that I could design my own clothes that are pretty great. Um, I had no clue. Going through, I mean, you got off these uh, anti-anxiety meds and you were going through divorce at the same time. Were both of these things responsible for this creative surge or was it one or the other? Or what do you think? Yeah, I think it was a combination. So I mentioned in my bio that, you know, I've become more open to the world. And I think that was a big part of it. Just, you know, letting my mind be open. And um, yeah, it, it's hard to say now, um, but I think it was both. Yeah, okay. for sure. Okay. So both of those things happen, which is good to know, because I think sometimes when we go through difficult things, I've been through divorce myself, you sometimes think that that's, that's it. Like, what am I going to do now? Kind of thing. It feels like the end of something, but really you're saying it's the beginning of something for you. It, it had sure. this effect on you and uh, it was part of it. I mean, yeah, the medication was the other part, but I think both of these things are significant events that can change our lives. And it sounds like that's what they did for you. So, so what are some of the things then now that you're doing differently than you were before? Well, I should mention that part of my, this journey for me, the, one of the biggest things was the spiritual aspect of it. So the divorce was so difficult that, you know, I had to go into a state of surrender. And when I did that, I, you know, I, I, I went into it. I had just an amazing spiritual journey. Um, I, I see life so much more different now. So that's a, that was a big component for me. I see like, you know, that we're all interconnected. That, yeah, I just, I see the world a lot more different, differently. So what is this, what was that spiritual journey? Like, what did it consist of for you? Because I know many of us have, have had something like that or, or want something like that, but what, what was it for you? Well, gosh, I don't know how much we want to get into, into this, but you know, I was just having a really hard time after my ex-husband left me. And one day I was, I was just, you know, kind of inconsolable and I was crying and I couldn't really work. And I went and took a nap and I had this really strong thought, which was that, you know, this is not the end of the world. You're making this more difficult than it really is. And I don't know if you know who Eckhart Tolle is. Oh, yes. Um, but I thought, you know what, why don't I go and just listen to Eckhart on my phone and do kind of a meditation. And I did that for about a half an hour to an hour. And after I was done, 
um, I felt really, I felt fine. I was still sad, but I knew everything was okay. And I, that's when I realized that it was my thoughts that were creating the, a large part of the problem. And I was able to work. I was able to work for a couple of hours. And I just did that every single day. And I ended up going through his entire um, power of now, which ends with the chapter of, you know, your relationship with God. I know people have a hard time with the word God. So you can, you know, it's just a word. But my understanding of God is different than the typical understanding. But it, that was the journey. And it just opened up my world for sure. Wow. Okay. I love that. And I, I, I love Eckhart Tolle. So I, <laughs> I completely understand going through that. And I, I've been through that before. Um, for me, it was Wayne Dyer at the time when I was going through stuff. And um, so, yeah, I find that fascinating. And I think it's good for us to all hear that because I think women are looking for a spiritual journey as well. And it can be very different from person to person. Um, and it doesn't have to involve God necessarily, but some sort of deeper connection to something beyond uh, what's here. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I love that you, that you were able to do that and that it wasn't complicated. It was, it was simple, but you just had these insights as you were going along. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in terms of like you being, you're also in midlife and I'm in midlife and my audience is obviously in midlife because that is the name of the podcast. When women are, are going through this time, a lot of times they are feeling stuck. Either they're stuck in a relationship or they're stuck in a particular job or situation, or they're just feeling life isn't very exciting. <laughs> Um, that there, that this is just the way it's going to be, you know, from now on, but your story is telling is very different and very inspiring. So what do you think women in midlife should be aware of, you know, those of us who are feeling stuck and, and want to move forward? Yeah. You know, I remember before my ex-husband left me that I was just feeling like I was kind of floating in life and just kind of you know, not lost exactly, but not having any sort of personal ambitions or the ones that I had were, you know, a little bit stymied. And, you know, I thought that I was really unattractive that I was becoming more and more unattractive all the time that, um, oh gosh, kind of that, that my life was over in a way, you know, and I think a lot of women, as we become middle-aged, especially when we're kind of giving our lives to our husbands and our family and our children and all of that, that we begin to think things that just aren't true. Um, there are so many things that you can do in life and life can surprise you at any moment, any time of your life. You can have a next chapter. You can, whether you're, you're married or not, whether your kids, you, you still have kids in the house or not, there, you can do anything. You really can do anything. You're stronger than you realize. That's something I found out, you know, fairly quickly. So I would really encourage women, especially if you're feeling a bit down on yourself, I would reality test the thoughts that you're having. Um, you're probably a lot more attractive than you realize. You're probably able to do so much more than you realize. Wow. That's inspiring. And I think we, we should all ask ourselves those questions and just, Oh, it's just so true. Yeah. yeah. Cause it is mostly our thoughts that are holding us back when we're in these situations, we just yes. believe we're stuck, but we're not actually stuck. Right. No. So it's questioning all of that. And, yeah. and I love that you did that because so, so tell me where were you before all of this happened and where are, what are you doing now? So in terms of like, where were you creatively before and where are you creatively now? Because that seems to be the biggest change for you. Sure, sure. Okay, so my life before the divorce was primarily, I was the captain of a tennis team. That was largely what I was doing. And nothing's wrong with that. Um, and then I was also volunteering at a homeless shelter, very involved in trying to, find a way to end homelessness, uh, at least here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then of course I was full-time wife cooking and cleaning and doing all the things you do to support 
you know, my, my ex was um, a professional journalist and he still is. And so just kind of supporting that life. And, you know, well, in many ways it was, it was good, but it wasn't really challenging me on a creative professional level. I was still writing to be clear. I'm a copywriter. And so I was doing that part time. So, you know, I found a way to have a full life, but it wasn't really satisfying. I thought it was, but not necessarily. At any rate, um, now I, I, after the, the divorce, I, I stopped being the captain of the tennis team. Um, it took three ladies, by the way, to come in and, and try and keep that tennis team afloat and they couldn't do it. So, and I had been captain for 10 years by myself. Wow. Um, but I am still volunteering at the homeless shelter. Before the divorce, I had um, created a forum to try and, you know, listen to get the mayor's office and the mayor's office became involved to listen to people who were experiencing homelessness. Um, and then the pandemic hit and that got completely knocked out. So fast forward, <laughs> what am I doing now? Um, so now, you know, I've had my own film production company. I've made my first movie, which was a short last year. Um, I am in the entertainment industry now. Um, I have, you know, uh, a couple of musicals that I'm developing. Um, I have an animated TV series. I have a lot of productions that I'm excited about. And as far as the, the goal in homelessness, I decided that rather than just focusing on Atlanta, Georgia, that I would try to use the rest of my life to end homelessness in the world, the entire world. So I'm going to use my creative pursuits to do that. Wow. Oh my gosh. So it's changed. It's, like, it's changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. I just see like you expanded like yeah, way beyond who you ever thought you could be. And yeah, and I think I, I have to attribute that to uh, my spiritual journey and to Eckhart Tolle. You know, I, I decided really early on. So to be clear, my ex left me for another woman and it was really hard. And like, I had a choice. I could have used that. I could have gotten really upset about that and very angry. Um, but I made a choice really early on to do just the opposite, to be kind, to, you know, forgive as soon as possible to decide like, rather than be upset, to um, you know, be as kind as possible to people who are suffering. Because I think when you're suffering, you can recognize that more. Um, so just spreading as much kindness and joy in the world as possible was my goal. Wow, that's challenging, I think. For... It was challenging. Uh, yeah. But when, you're, when, when you combine that with being open with the world, the, the universe is gonna cooperate with you. It's saying, yeah, let's keep doing this. And so that's how all these other opportunities come to you as well. Wow. So, so do you feel like these, like you just said, these opportunities came to you because you had this open mind or did you actively run after them? Like in your feeling of it? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's really a combination of surrendering. You surrender to the world with, and you accept whatever is, whatever happens. And when you do that, life works with you and you're working with life. And so in my case, I just happen to have a very creative mind. So, you know, and I'll just kind of, it, it works in a way that I think it's supposed to work rather than rejecting. When you reject, you know, things aren't going to go well. Yeah. Yeah. So you were actually, you had this confidence and this faith in this creative mind that you had did, did that not exist before like before the divorce and before you know being not being on your medication before that did you feel that confidence in your creativity did you have these ideas and didn't pursue them so what happened and that's kind of complicated I I've always been someone who's quietly confident I always know that I have like abilities um so I think there's always been a confidence that I've had taking the medication probably complicated that a little bit because so when you don't feel like when you feel like you have to rely on something I think there's always a part of your mind that's like are you okay I mean are we okay you know and so getting off the medication and saying oh yeah we're fine 
Now, to be clear, when you take a medication for 25 years, your mind's going to continue to kind of feel that out for a little while. So it's only been a couple of years for me. And my mind still is like, oh, are we okay? So I'll have moments here and there where, you know, I'm like a little bit nervous about it, but for the most part, we're, I'm much better. Okay. That's amazing. And as far as like the creative part of my mind, I hadn't, honestly, I had no idea, Debbie, that I could do what I'm doing right now. I thought I could be a screenwriter if I tried really, really hard, but I never thought I would be a producer and as connected into the industry that I am right now. And especially doing the musicals. I had no idea my mind could do that. No. And that's why I really would encourage or not encourage, but I hope I could be an inspiration to some women who are maybe wanting to do the same thing, to get off of medication or something, that there might be something on the other side that's going to be worth it. You know, that you just, you don't really know what you're capable of. At the same time, I wouldn't want to, I, there's no judgment either way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it. So it's, it's like a combination, a perfect storm of things that maybe happened with you that kind of unleashed or, or uh, like kind of opened this up for you, like this whole yeah. creative side. It was always there to be fair, I think, but it's yeah, just here's, that... here's how I know it was always there. So I think I was born to be an entertainer. I think I'm a natural entertainer. And here's, here's my, my evidence of it is in fourth grade, I had this explosive year similar to what I'm experiencing now. So I, um, I had my first writing published. I, I won a, a competition uh, for children's poetry. So my poem was published in a national children's book. Um, I won a talent show uh, doing a dance to Funky Town. <laughs> now that'll age me immediately. Um, and also like I used to have my teacher um, I asked, I, could, I would convince her to let me do um, like practice dance routines during recess and then have all the kids come back and watch me. So, you know, it's always been there. It's just for various reasons. And, you know, this is, I, I just believe this was meant to happen. I believe that my creative abilities were not meant to be seen in the world until now. I just don't, I don't know why that that's what I believe and I think I believe it has to do with my desire to end homelessness I think that um that's my largest like reason or I think that that, that was meant to be okay so so yeah so not only were you you know getting over these big things but then there's this other motivation like you said to end homelessness and so not just in your city anymore but in in the world like you said, yeah. like it's, you've just gone really big. And right. well, and here, here's, it, here's why I think I was meant to be. So my very first memory uh, was seeing someone who was homeless. I was driving in a car with my mom and there was a person who was, you know, sleeping on the streets. At the time, my little mind was like, oh my gosh, that person must be dead. Cause why else, you know, why is anybody helping that person? And then when I was older, I was, I realized, oh, that person was homeless. So I, yeah, I just, it's always been a, a calling for me. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So I, I love that. So through your art, through your creative pursuits, you're hoping to, to bring, is it raising awareness to homelessness? Is it's, that it's not, it's not raising awareness as much as it is. So I want to create a forum, a really large forum. And I know it's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of money. Um, but the, pro the main issue with why homelessness continues is that there are just so many different needs. You know, everybody's different. Whether you're experiencing homelessness or not, everybody's different. You have different needs. And uh, gosh, I've seen so many different stories. But the answers and the solutions to those problems are so desperate. They're so scattered. And the forum that I'm going to create is going to bring them all together. Um, and that's, that's how we're going to, how we're going to end homelessness. It's just going to take a lot of efforts. That's all. Okay. So through this forum, you would bring people together to, to do this. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I wasn't completely prepared to get into this for this 
interview. Yeah. I would be happy. I could talk about this for hours, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's, it's intricate. It's a little complicated, which is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, 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 my plan is, is, uh, it's, it's large. It's bold. I love, I like when I hear you speak and the things that you're doing, I think that's the word that comes to me is bold. Oh, thank you. And I, I love that because I think a lot of women aren't being bold, like as bold as we could be. And we're holding a lot of ourselves back. And I just love that you've been able to just push forward. And do you think, what are maybe two or three qualities maybe then this is a question for me personally too what what are the qualities you have that have enabled you to be this bold what are they um oh gosh um I'm somebody who's very resilient mm -hmm. and determined very determined like I you know if I know is not something I I I really understand so I got really close to creating that. Well, I did create the forum down at the Atlanta mission and got the mayor's in, uh, office involved and everything. And we were, we were on a good path really to start something that would eventually really address the problems here with homelessness. And so when I couldn't do that, you know, the, the only thing that made sense to me was to just do it on more of a global scale. Um, so I would say resilience, determination, and creativity. Because at the end of the day, I have a really creative mind that wants to solve problems. Okay. Okay. I love that. So it's just, it's, well, you're definitely resilient. Uh, I mean, from what you've bounced back from and, and like really bounced far back from <laughs> from where you were to where you are yeah. and doing all these things in a very short amount of time. Like you've done all these creative things in a very short amount of time, which is also encouraging. It doesn't take decades to get to do the things that you're doing. You've actually Not done them in a very short amount of time, which is, is amazing. I think a it's, lot of us, what is, stop think, us. Yeah. Go yeah I think that, I think that most women can do that. I really do. I don't think there's a whole lot that separates us. Maybe my mind's a little bit more creative than most, but I think it's exciting. It's really exciting to see what you can do, to see what you really can do. And I think when women understand that in our middle age years uh, and go out there, you know, we've all seen these, these movies, these movies about women who are middle-aged, whose husbands that leave them and they have these, you know, like Tuscan Sky, I think is one of them. You know, they're always a little bit hokey, but there's something to them. There's a reason why they keep making these movies. You know, it's, it can be a fantastic journey. And I'm not saying you have to be divorced to do that. I'm just saying, do something different. Do something each day that's a little bit different. Challenge yourself in ways that, you know, be uncomfortable. Find something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable and do that at least once a day. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you mentioned the movie because <laughs> I watched it how Sun. many times under the Tuscan Sun with Diane <laughs> yeah. Lane because I have watched that movie so many times. Yeah. Years I have the video of it. And um so many times because I was going through that probably around the time that I saw that movie and I was going through that whole divorce. And that just inspired me so much too, is that, yes, here's a woman in midlife who is starting over again. She left the U.S., went to Italy and bought this like totally run down house and starts building it from like scratch. Yeah, I think it's Not great. knowing the language. I think it's great. I think that is what we can do. You're right. It doesn't have to take a divorce to have to be able to do this. Not at all. Um, I'm even thinking of one of my clients on a much simpler way of doing it she just wanted to live in New York and she decided she was going to live in New York for three months. She was married, but she left uh, just for three months. Her, her husband supported her and she went and lived in New York city for three months and wrote because writing was one of her things. And yeah, you can do this. Oh, even funny. if you're married, you just have to make these decisions oh, and decide, yeah. right. You're doing absolutely it. a mistake that my ex and I made is that we were very codependent. 
you know, I, I didn't really do much outside of the marriage and I, that was a mistake for sure. Mm-hmm. So I love that she's doing that. I think couples can really work together that way, you know, and just do something really that challenges the individual. And that can be a journey for, I think a couple as well. I think that's great. She did that. Yeah, it's inspiring. I mean, we can do these things. And and yes, you've done it. On, you're doing it on a huge scale. It doesn't have to be on such a big scale, but we can be bold and we can do these things and, and push ourselves forward at this time of life. And age does not have to be. Not at all. And, you know, here's the thing, too, is it, it makes a lot of sense that women our age and middle age who've been in like long term relationships um, things have been pretty much the same for years and years and years. It makes sense that you don't think you can do things like that because you haven't really challenged yourself since maybe college or, you know, some people haven't even had a job. You've just been a complete, completely dependent on your husband and that's okay. It makes sense that you would think, Oh, I can't do that, but you can. Oh, you can. You can. Really can. It. I mean, I did, I did open mic comedy just a few weeks ago. I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> to me, that was actually like the funny. scariest thing. It must be the scariest thing ever because I think that is the biggest rejection you could put. Oh, yeah. To. <laughs> yeah. But it, here's the thing is, even if no one was going to laugh, they did laugh, by the way. Um, but even if they didn't, you would get off that stage and you'd be like, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I love that, I think. And that sort of takes me to this next question that I do ask all my guests is that what is the best part of getting older, in your opinion? For me, I understand that my journey has been a little bit different. You know, so I think for a lot of people, it would would, obviously it's your relationships that you have with people, I think they're still the most important. But for me, the thing that I've enjoyed the most is the spiritual journey I've been on and understanding that life is just so much more than, than I understood before. And that, you know, I think we have this innate sort of fear of death. And I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's just not what we think it is. It's much different. And um, yeah, just the spiritual component has been the most enjoyable for me. Okay. I I love that too, because I believe that I believe that that's what's helped me through big things in my life. And that continue to help me see things in a maybe more positive light that I am still capable of, you know, starting a podcast and doing things with which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So all these things that you can still do, because yeah, life is much bigger than our very little world can be sometimes. And that's not what you think aspect. Yeah, Yeah, it is. It it opens you up. You just the possibilities are truly endless. And I think that is what you know, your example leaves me with is that you can do anything you can choose today to do it differently. And in a very short amount of time, produce like amazing results and do amazing things. Absolutely. That's what I I take from your story. Um, I love that we shared this today. I think it's important for women to see other women doing things that we all probably would love to be able to do, but it's possible. It's possible for you, for, for you, for you, Christine, it's possible for me. It's possible for everybody who is listening. So I think you give us hope, you give us inspiration. And I really appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, you just really never know. You never know, like until you start challenging yourself. Yeah. You got to get out of that comfort zone. Like you said, that is a key. Like we get very comfortable at this time of life. And I think it's like, okay, we have to question that. I don't think life is supposed to be comfortable. I think the times that we're always going to remember the most or that mean the most to us is when we were a little bit uncomfortable. Life is here to challenge us. We're not, it's not here to make you happy. It's here to challenge you. Yes. And so I think part of us has to embrace that fact is. It's not easy. It's It's not because we all, I think, strive for comfort. And when we get here, we think, oh, this is where I was supposed to get to. But then when you stay here for a while, you're like, mm, I don't know. I don't think this is where I'm like, what's the, to point? Be. what's the point? Yeah. In, what's the point? In, in constant comfort. I, I don't really see it. No, no, because then you're not being, you're not out in the world. You're not 
pushing yourself. You're not changing yourself or anybody else when exactly. you're too comfortable, right? I don't even think it's great for your relationships. I think you could actually, you know, even have a more exciting marriage uh, and a more fulfilling marriage if you're challenging yourself. Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. I definitely do. I, I agree with that. So this has been a really fascinating conversation. I really appreciated having you on here, Christine. So if anybody in my Thank you, audience, Debbie. yeah, it was a pleasure. So if anybody in my audience would like to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Um, a couple of ways. They can email me. Um, I don't know if you want me to share my email now or just, I can put them in the show notes, but I'm going to put okay. all your info in the show notes. So yeah, your email or, address, will you know, be Instagram, there. Instagram's great. I'm very easy to find. I'm the only Christy K R I S T Y up the street, which is a play on Jenny around the block. <laughs> so I'm the only one you can find me and just, just uh, message me. Okay. And I'm happy to answer any questions. If I can provide any sort of support or insights, I'm more than happy to do it. I love that. Thank you so much, Christine, for being here today. And uh, we'll keep in touch. And I'd love to know what you're doing next and how oh, we, maybe we can help you with your project to end uh, homelessness. I would love that. The world. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, tell us what we can do as you go, as you yeah, together. after I get my creative projects really going and I start generating the sort of funds that I want to generate, and then I'm going to take, I'm going to be quite serious about the forum. And okay. it's going to be exciting. Yeah, okay. I'm excited too. So th thanks, Christine, for being here. And thanks, we'll talk soon. Sounds great.